Well, hello, everybody in the land of Facebook. Uh, Dave Shefke here, tuning in, if you are tonight, on the Willie Porter page. Um, doing a guest uh, Facebook Live moment sort of thing. Um, if you just got here, I'm basically going to be here to talk a little bit about our guy, Willie. And uh, just played a piece of music from, a little bit of a piece of music from uh, my solo drum album, which I am out in the universe promoting, but of course not going anywhere to do it from my house. This is where I'm at today. I'm in my basement studio in uh, Heartland, Wisconsin, which is approximately about a half hour from where Willie is. So we're pretty close together in the same area. Uh, so anyways, today... I'm very thankful to be able to uh, do my sort of Facebook show uh, on Willie's page. And I want to thank our guy for that. He's been very gracious in offering uh, his page for me to do so. We talked, he and I did, and um, we thought it'd be fun and hopefully interesting for me to, to kind of go through some of the things that uh, have gone on as far as how we've developed my role as a drummer with him and in shaping uh, excuse me the drum parts and the drum music per se uh, to fit his his songwriting so if you didn't know I've been with Willie for about 18 years and uh, since about 2002, three albums I've recorded on with him, a few other uh, miscellaneous Christmas songs and stuff too. Uh, we've worked qu quite intensively together on, on a lot of music. So I don't know if it's like 30 something songs or so, whatever it is. And uh, I've been very, I feel very fortunate to have, have landed this gig with, with him. Uh, it's been an incredible learning experience for me as far as helping me shape where I'm going as a, as a drummer and a musician. Um, as I've been doing the solo drum thing, one of the things that has been very helpful to me was in, in working with Willie, we discussed many different ways to approach the drum kit for his music and through our experimentations and discussions about what is right for this song and for that song and such, it led me down a number of different paths as far as how I approach the instrument, which incidentally was not the direction I'd been headed in as a musician for a large uh, portion of my life. I, uh, I'd spent a lot of time, I'll make it real quick, <laughs> I'm not going to talk forever, uh, spent a lot of time before I met Willie uh, playing a lot of rock music and funk music, soul music, that sort of stuff, original things. And I'd done a lot of experimental stuff, but I had never worked with anybody that approached music in such a dynamic way. Namely, uh, considering lyric writing. Uh, from a drummer's perspective, <laughs> I mean, I love singers and I love great songs, but uh, coming into to my career, I I got to be honest, I not that I didn't care what the singer was singing or how they were singing it. I always felt very uh, empathetic towards that, but the lyrics to me were not always something that I was tuned into. And uh, working with Willie... I had to, I had to, I had to figure that out. I had to get it because uh, it, there's no way to work with him from a drummer's perspective unless you do tune into that and understand where he's coming from as a lyricist. Because the drums, as well as every other instrument in his band, needs to support the song, and uh, his lyric writing is incredible. And this is one of the things that I've I learned. And in, in, I mean, my ignorance was pretty apparent, but. Uh, you know, tuning into him and the way he he would sculpt a song and the and the narratives 
uh, once I really started paying attention, um, I was just completely dumbfounded in the creative uh, uh, output and, uh, and, and really enjoyed focusing more on that than I had in the past, well, considerably more. So anyways, because that being uh, a big part of, of where the music was going, of course, the drum parts are shaped to fit the sonic presentation of the song as far as how it's being recorded and the instrumentation and all that stuff too. But with lyrics really being a, you know, a main focus, the drum parts need to always augment in the right way where that energy is going. And and th for me as a in my background as a player, that even though I may not have always tapped into the lyrical side of things, I've always been very focused on where singers were headed, and how how I tuned in and and supported where their energy was going. And uh, so, anyways, working with Willie has taught me an awful lot about expanding my dynamic range as a drummer. Which, it's not that it's hard to do. It's just that you need to be in different situations so that you can go down that sort of path. And and I'll get to, <laughs> I'll get to some music quickly here. Um, anyways, in doing that, uh, it, it forced me, in a good way, to start to, to really expand the range more or less quieter and to see how subtle I could be on the instrument, which once I figured out how to get that going on my behalf and 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 to tune into that part of my sensibilities as, as a player, I feel like it did massive things for me in just understanding all music from all different angles. And then when I approached my own perso personal writing, same sensibilities were applying. Um, and dynamic range is very, very important. And understanding that you can do a lot and and one of the things Willie told me is, you know, we have to maintain intensity per se in a song without getting loud, and and it was not something that I was good at before. Uh, and working with him, it, I, you know, I had to figure that out, and I'm really happy that I did because when you do bring up that volume and you can bring those contrasts in and out, it adds so much more dimension to the to the music that you're playing. So, anyways, I could I can go on all day about how fortunate I am to have this gig. But um, the, the point of this whole show, other than that, is to get into some of this music. So, anyways, I'd like to start with the first album that I recorded with Willie, which is Available Light, uh, released in 2006, I think. Late 2006. And um, I had done a, f a little bit of recording with him prior to this, but this was the first, uh, like, real focused we're going to make an album and we're going to deal with with uh looking at the drum parts pr really putting them under the microscope per se and i'll i'll say this probably 50 times during this whole thing i learned so much <laughs> during the recording of this album and it uh it was produced by willie and dave adler our keyboard player they co-produced it and one of the things that we did uh, with the music was Willie came in and he uh, we had played a little bit of some of the music available light might have been one and maybe um, loose gravel the rest of it I hadn't I don't think I had heard uh, maybe some sketches he played some guitar on but uh, so with this album what he did was he came in and recorded all the guitar and most of his vocal I think he might have redone some of them I couldn't remember can't remember but um he recorded all that stuff, and then we brought in the drums second. So there was no, there was just his guitar and vocal, and sometimes with, with one track there was a, a keyboard thing. But otherwise, uh, I was so I was just playing to his guitar and vocal part. There was no bass part put down. There was no other instrumentation, which was a new thing for me, again, uh, being in a new situation. And in this case, what we did was we looked at it as a, like a kind of a song per day sort of thing. And we'd come in the morning and start working on a tune. And in a lot of cases, I hadn't heard the song. So we'd sit and talk about it, talk about the approach, and then really discussed all the elements about how the drum part was going to be played dynamically, the components of the drum kit that were going to be used, because I had different combinations of drums. 
the drum kit that I used was a, a Yamaha at the time. Um, and uh, so Dave and Willie would just kind of go back and forth, you know, directing me on the way we'd shape the parts. So I don't remember the order of the songs that we did, but the song I want to do first from that album is Available Light. Now this one um, was a lot of fun to record because, well, they were all fun to record, but this one was really fun to record because I was able to do a bunch of overdubbing for it as well. Um, there's drum kit, there's some shakers and stuff, and then I played a little bit of djembe as, to, as well. Uh, so when we wrote it, or when he wrote it and we put the, put the parts down, we did them all separately. So when we did it live, I kind of had to do a, a hybrid of the parts. And if you listen to the song, they come in and out real fast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it like we would do it live to the track. And I'll show you what I used. So I would use a djembe for parts of it uh, after the first verse. So I'm going to use this guy, which is just a little mini djembe. And I'm just going to play a little bit of the tune. And then, sorry about that. I used maracas on, uh, in the first verse as well. Now, so when we play it live, I would use these maracas to play the blah, blah, blah. And then I would use these parts of the maracas to play the drum part. So a little awkward, but fun and, and convenient. So I'm not picking up a pair of sticks, setting these down and back and forth. So here we go. I'll try to play a little bit of available light. Not screw it up, hopefully. So here it is from the beginning. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> so there's available light. So a little bit of juggling as you can see, but um, these were all the difference as far as playing it live. Of course, I've wrecked them. 
but it really made it a lot easier to kind of get back and forth. Um, when we would tour uh, on that tour doing that song, I had a djembe next to me, and I didn't have to pick it up like that. I had it right next to me, so I'd play it like this. And I think I just held on to these right here, kept one under my armpit. Okay, so that's available light. Uh, and pretty much the rest of the tune, you can tell it goes back and forth from those those elements. One of favorite one of my favorite songs to play. So I, that's available light. Okay, so the next one I'd learn, I want to talk about real quick is still doing t still doing time. Sorry. Which, uh, okay, again I'll say it three million times today. The learning experience on this one was a huge thing for me. Still doing time, really subtle, mellow ballad, extremely slow. When we recorded it, we tried a couple different parts. And I was playing the beat, and it's real slow. You know? That sort of thing. And he started doing it, and Willie's like, hey, man. He's like, you know, can you play it? And, you know, just real sparse with the beat. I was like, well, okay, you know, real straight. That's cool. He's like, I want just, you know, quarter note, backbeat, quarter note, backbeat, which basically is just this. Which is... If you one of the things about playing drums is like a lot of times you kind of keep time by doing extra stuff. It helps you to keep your your place. I don't have a problem not playing much, so what I would do is I would kind of tap my foot like this. You can see that going. You can't really probably hear it very well, but my heel is going on the back plate of the foot of the of the hi hat pe uh, pedal. So when we're playing the the song, you know, I played it with that that beat that he was saying. And it's even slower than that. But I was doing it like that, and I was tapping my heel. And it was helping me kind of keep time, even though we were, I, was, I had a click in my ears, but it really helped me kind of assimilate the pulse. Well, <laughs> he's like, gets on the on the talk back mic. He's like, hey, man, you got to stop that heel thing. It's coming through the mics. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. So I had to really sort of internalize this tempo, kind of take a big, deep breath, and just play just try to play as far back and relaxed as I possibly could, which was a really, really, really great learning experience because I had never played a song that slow with so few notes in between for such a long time and through the piece. And it, it was like, okay, you know, I, I figured it out and I was able to do it and play the track. But it, it told me that, okay, this is something you need to work on as a player, something you need to get figured out so that if you come across this again, you can play with as much space as possible and all this air and you're not you know, relying upon this stomping thing with your foot or whatever. You need to be able to internalize the time, which is one of the things lots of uh, great drummers will tell you is they'll say you, know, you have to be able to feel at that time within you and, and either you're counting or sensing or whatever you're doing, you have to be able to internalize it. I mean, it's okay if you're tapping your heel like this, but if you're playing real loud, you're not going to hear it, so it's not going to be a big deal. But when you're playing really soft, sensitive music, that's obnoxious. So anyways, I'll play a little bit of uh, Still Doing Time just because I love the song so much. And we haven't played it in a long time as a band, but uh, maybe it'll come back again. So anyways, Still Doing Time. I'm going to push it ahead a little bit to where the song gets going. See you
Okay, still doing time. Great ballad. Uh, and uh, as you can <laughs> probably saw, my leg started to go part of that when we first started going on that. I uh, had to control that. So anyways, still doing time. Awesome tune. Uh, so that was kind of how that one came together. Okay, I could probably talk about every one of the songs that we did together, but you guys would probably get done with this real quick. So I'll <laughs> just go on to the next album. So the next album that I did uh, with Willie was uh, How to Rob a Bank. And 2008, nine, something like that. And so this album we did differently too. Uh, each of the three albums that I've been on, we've approached them a little bit different. And with this one, uh, Willie and I got together and discussed some of the music. We worked out a couple tunes uh, and, and the arrangement of a few things. And then he was like, let's, let's do this differently. Let's do this album a little bit differently. And he wanted to just have he and I go in together and knock out the basic tracks and then bring in the instrumentation after the fact. Excuse me. And this album's got all kinds of really cool stuff on it. Um, the, the girls from Raining Jane are on it. Uh, Natalia Zuckerman's on it. Uh, Paul Sebar's on it. I think there's strings on it from. Uh, I can't think. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Um, well, Mai's on it from Raining Jane. I don't know. There might be other strings too. Maybe not. Anyways, um, so there's all kinds of really cool instrumentation on it, which was brought in after the fact. So, with these songs, um, like I said, we. We got together and we we assembled parts, and in this case, he, he his approach to it was. Whereas on the first album, it was very detailed as far as how he wanted me to approach my parts, and there was a lot of discussion and direction upon how he wanted those to fit, which was cool with me. Um, but with this one, this one he was kind of like you know, let's just play more, and I think. We'd been in a band already now by this point, six, seven years, and I think we really knew each other very well. He was understanding where I was coming from, and I was definitely getting the right uh, picture for how he approached his music. You know, just working with somebody over time, you start to really assimilate things. And uh, for me, one of the things that had happened since the, the first album we did together was uh, I, I rediscovered the band. Um, and I'd always been a fan of of them but I really rediscovered the band and particularly Lee Von Helm and I didn't know and I kind of assumed Willie liked them a lot but I didn't know he liked them as much as he did and uh, when I when I got deeper into that group and really spent the time with it I under, understood a whole angle from where he was coming from as a songwriter i mean he's multifaceted there's a lot of different things that are coming in in different directions which is really cool i really enjoy that because i listen to a lot of different things but um incidentally me getting more uh, of, of and, and gathering more of that influence of the band really was helpful for how i was going to approach the next bit of music that we worked on because incidentally there was stuff that was really drawing upon those influences, which I didn't know that he was going to be bringing in. So it was really just kind of an interesting coordin uh, coordination of things. Um, in particular, the idea of, and it, this again, this necessarily wasn't really talked about, but one of the things that the band does a lot is they do, they do these halftime feels to a tune that's normally kind of boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, that sort of thing. And a lot of bands do that, but they do it a lot. And so Willie had a couple tunes um, that that feel was was needed. And having really studied uh, Levon in the way he approaches his parts, 
I was able to pretty much just, um, sorry, <laughs> cue another tune, uh, pretty much able to really kind of tap into that. So the song I'm going to throw on is a song we never play anymore. <laughs> so it's cool to, to, to jump in and, and check it out again. Uh, the song called Wide Open Mind, which, uh, um, is like I said, kind of this feel. I don't think we played this song for probably ten years. So when I th I was like, gosh, I got to think of some tunes that would be cool to play, and I was like, this is cool. But <laughs> I remember what I'm doing. So, anyways, um, I'll jam through a little bit of it, and um, and then maybe just break it off and play a little bit of a little bit of the part. One of the things I do on this tune is um, I ride on the side stick of the the rim of the snare here. I'll do it over here, so you can see. And so you're up like this sort of thing for most of the groove of the verses and which I think I did on another song too later, but which gives you kind of a, kind of a funky thing. And, um, and, uh, and then I'm kind of just playing around with the, with the, with the, with the feel a little bit. So anyways, here's wide open mind and, uh, I kick it off like, with this roll. So I'm going to probably just follow my lead and so there's no cue in on it, but here we go. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Drummer at the controls. Okay, so that's the basic groove on that. So to demonstrate a little bit of that, uh, this rim thing, I'm just going to do it from here. So that's the basic feel of the tune. When I, re I think when we recorded this, we didn't use much of a click track, which was a very common thing at, at that point in, mu in the music business. And actually, at the front end of recording all this stuff with Willie, we had, you know, the music industry had been going through a lot of changes, and everybody was recording on computers. Well, some people weren't, but for the most part, a massive amount of the industry was. And uh, that's what we were doing with Willie, too. And one of the things that became much more of a standard, I believe, is that everybody was recording with a click, you know? And that was something that was kind of a, some artists did it and some don't. And when we did available light, everything was with a click through everything. And I believe with How to Rob a Bank, we kind of used the click in the beginning and then kind of let the tempos ride a little bit, which was kind of cool. Um, some tunes we left it on for the whole thing to keep everything steady. Some things we let it just kind of lift and go different places as long as it wasn't too obnoxious. I don't know, maybe he doesn't want people to know that. Sorry if you don't. I don't remember. I'm just guessing. I think that's what we did. Anyways, um, the benefit of not having the click, though, is that it can kind of allow you to be... You know, where you might... Maybe you might be a little bit behind the beat on one measure, but then the next measure you're a little bit more steady or direct or consistent. And then the next one you can kind of push and do different things. Not to be obnoxious, so it sounds like you're speeding up and slowing down all the time, but 
it just creates a little bit more tension at different points in time and tons and tons of bands will do that some bands will intentionally speed up as they go to through different parts of songs it used to be a, a very common thing particularly when you get to a chorus so anyways that's that okay i'm going to keep on rolling with the how to rob a bank album because my favorite song is on this album favorite song that we've done um so we Willie threw this song at me, which was a really old tune that he had written. And I think it might have been with Tom Pirazzoli. Sorry if it's not Tom, but I thought Tom was involved in this. Um, this is Too Big to Sell. Mallets. My first song, I think, ever that I ever recorded was with Mallets, with, was, was, this, was this particular song. And the drum part is actually very, very simple. It's not a hard, difficult part. But the song, for me, it just spoke volumes. And I just loved recording it. I loved playing it when we did it. Again, another song we don't play very much of. Maybe we will again. Um, so a lot of space, slow tempo. But by this point, I felt more confident. And it just stopped to keep you know, time. And <laughs> um, particularly uh, why this song meant a lot to me, it still does, is um, if you look back behind me, I've got some painted drum heads. My mom is an oil painter, and uh, she's been painting on my drum heads for years now. And uh, this is all. This song's all about artists and famous painters, and Willie's take on on some things about that. And uh, I just, I just, I just thought the topic was so awesome, and the song is great. And I'm just so glad that he. He brought it back to record because it's an old tune from what I understand. I don't remember how old it was, but it was when he, we, I think he and I might have played it somewhere for something as a duo. And he was like, yeah, I want to I want to record that. And I was like, wow, we got to do it. So anyways, this is too big to sell. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit of it. Just the basic feel. Very basic, but fun. So this is my first song. I got to have uh, an intro on, I believe, with him. So too big to sell. a home for Claude's lilies because they were too big to sell and Vincent's hill was healed in a year though we never was quite well off the best mine and all Perry gathered the lenses of his eyes to let in the light let in the Gown around and ground in a Tahitian town. Found the cause of paradise lost. Left behind some diamonds to find and put pain to the walls of his house. The screen with color, the screen with sound. Then he burned the place down to the ground Down to the ground I stopped because I could listen to that part every day, all day, I think. <laughs> Something about that tune. Anyways, one of my favorite Willie Porter songs. <clears throat> fun to play more fun to listen to but anyways that is too big to sell one last thing on the how to rob a bank album 
I've got a really old snare drum here. This is from the 50s. This is, these drums are not the drums I recorded on. Neither is this one. But the drums I did record on that album, I have to mention, I wish I had. And if Dan, if you're watching this, <laughs> my good friend Dan Aukhofer loaned me these old, crazy Ludwig drums that had been sitting in a barn for 11 years. Sitting in a barn, unheated, there were anything, or in Wisconsin. Not climate controlled, nonetheless. These drums had a really cool sort of mojo to them. We played them on, I played them on a gig at his at his house. He had a house uh, part, wedding we played for the, at Dan's house. And um, I, I borrowed the drums from Dan, and I'm like, hey, man, would you mind if I tried, you know, checking these drums out, put some different heads on, and see, you know, we're going to record. And they had a really cool um, vibe to them. So I was like, you know, would you let me check them out? I got these drums in the studio, and I have never heard drums sound the way they did. So that whole album was recorded with these old drums that I had to give back to my good friend Dan Aukhofer. <laughs> Anyways, those are on every song on that album. I believe we used a different bass drum because there were some problems with the bass drum. But otherwise, and there's this crazy old 1961 Ludwig drums. And... uh we use them on the next album too, which we're going to talk about next. So, um, the next album uh, I recorded with Willie was Human Kindness. And this one we did uh, is a, a massive departure from the way things had gone before. We had been recording at Willie's studio in downtown Milwaukee. And he moved out of that place and he wanted to record at his house, which I thought was an awesome idea. Uh, I like recording studios, but I just, there's a thing about recording at your house and houses have just a certain mojo and a certain, I don't know, it's, it's just cool to do at a house. And he has a really cool old house. Um, so we recorded at his house and I wish I had, I was going to try to find some pictures to, to show of the setup, but it was really cool because the drums were set up, up in his living room facing he's got like a, a living room a lifted up older living rooms kind of a lot of it's an older house so these they're they're smaller separate rooms where they're kind of uh, closed in by an, an enclave and so they're kind of narrow so we set the drums and then and then and then the rooms so like he's, he's got a living room and then there's a hallway and then there's his kitchen and so there's there's like these different enclaves as you go through and it's not real big but there's a there's a it's almost like a tunnel the way the way it is like a because there's different enclaves and the sound can sh kind of shoots across the room and it's all hardwood floors and stuff and hard plaster walls. And so we set the drums up in this living room and shot them across the sound, across the, um, the, the whole spance. And then we shot microphones over on the other end of the room. And it just had this phenomenal sound and uh, a good bulk of the drum sound on the record album CD. It is a record too. Uh, is this live sound that we got from just throwing those mics up? And we also put mics close up to the drums too. But it just a, there was just a m magical sound. And uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through a couple tunes from this album. Um, the first one I want to do is this one, uh, "Walking with the Man." "Walking with the Man" was another super fun tune to, to record. Lyrical content is great, great vibe. Uh, and one of the things that was different about this album too is we recorded more as a band. So Willie recorded with me. Um, I was upstairs. Willie was in the basement. Brian Meir, our bass player, uh, recorded um, his part in a different room. But we were all doing it simultaneously as opposed to the bass parts sometimes being done later and stuff like that. So we were definitely recording more with a band feel, band sound. In this one, we definitely turned the click off on a lot of the tunes. We just had four clicks at the beginning or whatever, and then we'd start playing, and the click was gone, which was cool because <laughs> we all kept pretty good tempo, and, uh, the, and the, st the time stayed pretty consistent, which is great. And so anyways, walking with the man, what we did was, Willie was like, yeah, man, I want you to, <laughs> hey, man, I want you to, <laughs> he kind of said it like that. Um, I want you to, to approach this with a really kind of, you know, can we get a kind of a, 
uh, a unique sort of sound to the to the part. And uh, the song initially kind of warranted kind of like a, a brush sort of feel like this. Kind of like a... Kind of something like that. Kind of like a... Like 60s kind of straight, sh you know, groove. Something like that. And give or take. Anyways, but he wanted a little bit more of a... Uh, just a little, I think a little bit more musicality to it. Just something a little bit more characteristic. And that's probably a better word. So I was like, gosh, man, I don't know. I'll try some different stuff. I grabbed some different sounds. And he's like, no, nah, it's not working. But you know, what about this? And so I had this thing from my good friend, uh, Monica Mansfield. Hey, Monica. Uh, she had uh, thrown these to me. They kind of... There's a, there's a correct title for these, but a lot of people call them the goat's talons or whatever. But just these little, um, <laughs> I'm not even sure what I'm using here. Anyways, they make this sound, okay? <laughs> so, anyways, if you stomp your hi-hat and you put it on there, you get that sort of thing. Right here, better that way. So, got those out, and he's like, yeah, those are cool. And then he had this really tall... Um, African drum. Something like this djembe, but probably another four inches taller. So I'm going to put the drum right here. And then what he had was probably this much taller. Big, long. It might even been this much. It was really long, high. So, and I was like, well, let's just put this drum up here and try some stuff. I started playing this pattern. If I can remember it. Something like that. He's like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's track it. Let's do it. Like, okay, cool. So we just kind of threw this part together, and then we started to play it. Well, you know, when you first come up with a part, it's like, you, oh, it's a cool idea, but can you actually do it? And then can you actually do it so that it sounds like you know it? That's one of the, the cool things about recording in this, you know, imp or coming up with stuff in the studio where you're improvising a little bit and trying to be creative. But then the next thing is, can you actually play it <laughs> to do a take that's actually going to be what's, you know, quality for, you know, the album? So that's what the pressure's on. And I'm playing this drum and it's up here and I'm reaching my arm up like this and I got to play this almost this whole tune this way, bouncing it on the drum, hitting this brush and, and keeping the singing. And I might have been doing something else too. Just can't remember and I wish I would have I think I've got a picture of it somewhere but anyways so it took me a little bit and by the time I got done playing the song my arm from holding it up like this high was just it was pretty uh, pretty jacked up but anyways it was the tune I think just turned out great and we got the right tones brought the mics in on it and stuff so you're really getting the essence of the drum kit so anyways I'll play a little bit of it this is walking with the man another song we just don't play very much Willie I think we'll play it again soon though um, he's been talking about it so this is Walking with the Man. Hold on, let me get set here.
walking with the man carpe diem string uh, quartet that's who i was thinking of they did not play in the last album but that's who's doing the strings on that song and they play on a couple other tunes on the record unbelievable stuff great tune walking with the man but that's how we did it um stuff that i don't know the names of i gotta say this album for me with willie i mean these all have been fun but this one was really a blast just from like being able to approach these songs in a lot of different creative ways and uh, i had been spending a lot of time recording on my own doing improvised music and i'd been doing a lot of different things with sounds and, and shaping the way i was kind of uh, arranging the drums and bringing different sounds in and stuff. So it was really just a perfect time for me to to, to have this sort of like, okay, there's all these different ways to approach things. Um, so I feel like I was able to get a really good spance of my abilities as a player in, in drawing from a lot of the, my influences and, and approaches. Um, so the next one I want to talk, I'm going to talk about three for this album before we run out of time here. Um, the next one I want to talk about, and I'll just do a real quick play on it, is um, Try to Forget, which we do play on occasion. And um, this song is 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 cool because uh, this was my attempt to um, capture the approach of another common um, themed drummer uh, favorite for he and I, um, Jim Keltner. And... Um, I don't know that I necessarily play like Jim Keltner on the tune. Jim has played with all kinds of people. Um, George Harrison, Steely Dan, tons of, Ry Cooter, tons and tons of people, session guys, one of the, the legends of LA sessions. And um, he's just got this really, uh, Traveling Wilbur, Wilburys, it goes on and on and on. Incredible feel. And, and when I heard this tune, I was thinking, gosh, this is just rem reminds me of something that Jim Keltner would play something cool on. So I tried to play something cool like Jim Keltner would play. And um, so this is, I try to forget, I'm going to jump ahead to where the drums kind of come in. Cause it comes People in move later. so fast, forgive and forget. There's nothing I ain't told you, you didn't need to know. So try to forget. Memory fire Willie has some phenomenal guitar playing on that tune. I think that's you, Willie, right? Or is that Martin Barr on this one? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyways, um, just to say, say what the approach was on the tune, so Jim Keltner is kind of known. He, he and Charlie Watts and Levon Helm kind of do this, this off the hi-hat sort of thing. So I'll just mute the People think that Charlie Watts is making a mistake when he's playing that way, but he's not. He's doing it on purpose. Um, that actually comes from a Levon Helm thing. Um, this is the story that I've read. This hi-hat, lifting your, your hand off the hi-hat when you hit the snare. It's not a very common thing. Some people think do it when they can't keep time. Levon did it because he's cooler than everybody. Because Levon can keep some time. But one of the th cool things about it is that when you play the snare, 
and you're not hitting your hi-hat at the same time, when you're miking the drums, the leakage doesn't cross over. So in other words, when you're hitting the hi-hat at the same time, that sound will go into the microphone. But if you take the hi-hat off and you hit the snare, you get just the true sound of the snare. But it also creates a kind of a cool feel, too. And Keltner's kind of kind of a country groovish rock sort of thing. It's also very similar to like what um, Jim Gordon would do with Derek and the Dominoes, that sort of thing. And, or um, Clapton, uh, Jamie Oldacre, I think, on uh, Boulevard, Boulevard 461 or whatever the <laughs> album that is. I can't remember. All right, I said too much that I can't remember. So there's that. Um, one last tune, and I'll try to just hit a little bit of it. Boy, I could do this all day with these tunes. There's so many that I just had, had such a great time playing on. Okay, this last one on human kindness is uh, kindness is constellation, and this was a, an interesting song to to craft the drum part for. Willie wanted me to do a lot of different things for the drum part. Not so much like busy like drum solo stuff, but he wanted a lot of uh, creative approaches to the different parts, which which was, I thought, a very interesting way to do things. A lot of times, the drum parts I play for him <clears throat> from song to song generally are, you kind of lock into a couple different patterns that you're going to stick with. Not going to be a lot of fills. There's not going to be a lot of cymbal crashing and stuff, which is totally cool with me. But in this case, he wanted a lot of activity on the drums to propel the energy of where the song was going. So that meant I had to have all these different little things together. So... um. We kind of sculpted it in pieces as far as how we recorded it. He was like, let's do this part and figure out how it's going to be, and then we'll do the next part and kind of do it in sections. And then I had to, you know, put it together as the, the whole piece later on when we played it live. So here's Constellation. I'm going to play a little bit of just kind of like the verse into the chorus. What's cool about this tune with the drum part is that there's a bunch of rim stuff and little mutes that I'm able to do. Stuff like that. I was able to kind of do that sort of thing. It was definitely, uh, when I did it, I, I, I pretty much improvised the part. So like if I would record it one way, and then I did the next round, if I wasn't quite right, I would, you know, there would be just a, a couple little subtle differences. So I didn't do it exactly the same way every time uh, I would try to do a pass. I'd probably take through maybe three or four passes before we got the right one for each part. can't remember, but, um, but the point is, is that, so... You know, some things were muted, so if I hit the drum, I might have gone like this one time, and then the next time I might have gone, you know, so different stuff like that. So as I play it now, again, there's still same, some of that same element. You have the basic skeleton of the part, but within that, the, the dynamics of the part change, and which is cool. So there's a little bit of freedom. But what's cool about this tune, and as, as I get into it, he's got this, this snare thing that he wanted me to do where I'm kind of just... I had never done for a tune where it was like, this is going to be like the section for the chorus, uh, part of the pre-chorus, I believe. So he's having me do this thing where I'm going. Uh, That sort of thing. So I'm going to play the tune uh, and maybe get up into maybe the chorus and then we'll cut, cut it. So here's a constellation. Looking 
Taste the salt upon her skin She's become A constant Moving I lied, I played the whole song. <laughs> that was Constellation. Uh, eight o'clock. Holy cow. And I just played parts of songs and talked quickly about them. Uh, well, anyways, this was great. I had a blast doing this. Um, whoever's been able to stop by, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me talk about drums. I could do this all day. In fact, I usually do it all day when I'm teaching. Um, it's fun to talk about this stuff. Uh, it's fun to talk about Willie's music. Hope I didn't say anything, Willie, that's too obnoxious. I know he doesn't talk a lot about this stuff. Um, I just enjoy the, the whole process. And uh, playing playing original music with, with Willie has been a, a game changer, life changer for me as a musician, as a person. He's one of my very best friends. And, um, you know, it's uh, I've been very fortunate to have this this gig with him so he knows I thank him over and over and uh, everybody stay safe thanks for stopping by have a great Sunday night and see you later <laughs>